Hey everybody, this is going to be a, just a uh, short topic on power chords. And it seems a little odd because this is actually something that is often overlooked in uh, portable sound systems. Uh, power chords are actually uh, very important because without them we don't have power. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of power chords the improper type of power chords are used in sound systems. Now, looking at the back of the rack, the power chords that are in here are, are okay. They don't need to be large because a lot of the rack equipment does not use hardly any type of voltage or amperage. So we can get by with using small power chords just as you see here. Okay, looking at the power chords coming out of the back of the amplifiers, these are your standard 14 gauge, 3 conductor, 15 amp cords. These are generally good enough for the amplifiers. Uh, in this case, these are QSCs. And more than likely, a lot of amplifiers use the same type of power cord. The distance on these, uh, the length of these are probably about 3 feet. Uh, if you intend upon using anything longer than a uh, 3 foot, power cord strictly for an amplifier, uh, you may need to step up uh, to something like a 12 gauge. Selecting the proper type of power extension cord is extremely important, especially when it comes to providing power for amplification. As I said before, rack mounted gear as well as uh, many consoles do not require the kind of current that amplification requires. Now this is an example here, this orange cord is an example of what you should never use in a sound system. A cord like this could be only be used for, let's say if you're going to run a small fan at front of house or you're going to run a fan across the stage for the performers. But a cord like this should never be used for amplification. It simply does not provide enough current to the amplifier as well it is not really suited for outdoor use. Okay, another type of power cord that uh, makes its way into the use of sound systems is one of these. This is a 12 gauge power cord, a three conductor, your standard uh, 15 amp power cord. This type of cord, it would be much better utilized than the orange cord uh, that you saw before. These cords, however, really shouldn't be a part of a sound system. If in a pinch, if you needed to use a power cord, let's say for uh, monitor speakers or for perhaps uh, mids and highs, this type of power cord would be okay. It is 12 gauge, it can handle uh, the current, however, it's not really suited for outdoor use. Uh, you can use these outdoors, but the jacketing, which is very important, uh, really can support the type of wear and tear that you may be placing on it. Okay, this next cord is what really should be utilized uh, for sound systems, more specifically for amplification. This is a 10 gauge SOW power cord. The 10 gauge power cord is much more appropriate for running voltages uh, long distances, for example, 150, maybe even 200 feet. The jacketing that's on this type of power cord can support outdoor weather much, much greater than the other two uh, that you previously saw. The jacketing on this is uh, water resistant as well as oil and other chemical type of resistance. Uh, this is something that uh, you could easily place on the ground. People can walk over it. People can spill alcohol on it. They can spill drinks on it. Cars can drive over this. Uh, this is a very industrial, very durable power cable. Okay, and in summary, uh, looking at the power cords, the orange, yellow, and the black, uh, stay away from the orange, never use those for any amplification. Uh, the yellow may be able to use in a pinch, but I highly recommend the use of a 10 gauge uh, SOW rated power cords.
using the correct type of power cords uh, unfortunately has a drawback because they are extremely heavy. Uh, the power cords used in this case, I want to say there's probably about 15 of them. There's close to 300 feet of 10 gauge in power cords as well. There's a snake in here and a whole assortment of other 12 gauge speaker cables. This box is filled with with a ton of copper and this case probably weighs close to 300 pounds. So there is sort of a drawback in having the proper power cords, but uh, the result is very substantial. Okay, the thing to take away from knowing that the proper choice of power cords is important is that the bass response of the amplifiers is greatly improved. Smaller gauge power cables do not provide the voltage uh, say and or current that uh, many amplifiers need to be able to produce quality sound at high power output levels. The lower the gauge, for example the 10 gauge and, and even 8 gauge wire uh, provides the voltage that an amplifier needs to be able to produce a uh, to produce a quality base output from an amplifier. Uh, many problems with uh, smaller sound systems is the use of small small power cables uh, causes problems with the amplifier being able to produce bass and that results in a lot of distortion. Uh, people think that, that their amplifiers are bad or they've got a problem with their mixing board. Anytime you know, a loud kick drum hits, it comes out distorted. More than likely, uh, you may want to look at the extension cords that are, that are being used to provide power to the, uh, to the bass amplifiers.